another good three points and a clean sheet. It's been a good Christmas, hasn't it? That's a good good win. Great effort from my boys. Uh, yeah, I call that the, the last fixture of the Christmas period. So it was, a, it was great to start the, the year with a, the clean sheet and a win. Uh, what exactly went right today from your point of view? I just played strong, good determination about it. A little bit sloppy at times with the ball. Uh, throughout the game, really, but we we kept going. We have high energy levels in our team, and we and we keep going. And uh, for me, it's a, it's a great return over the Christmas period to get to get the amount of points we have done. And we we put it to bed now, and we move on to next Saturday. How pleasing is it for you that you change personnel, you change uh, you change formations, and yet the points still keep coming? Credit to my players, not me. They they're the ones that put the work in the training ground and and give me everything that I ask for when when we work on our different shapes and uh, formation. So they, the credit goes down to them because you as only as a manager you're only as good as your players and the knowledge they put in when you put it, the work on the training pitch, and they they're pretty adaptable in in two or three formations. We've got another one up our sleeve if we need to use it as well. So uh, they they'll keep working hard. It's important that. My players are well programmed not to get carried away. We just move on to the next game. So it's no good you guys getting carried away, asking them questions because they, they'll just be programmed for the next game. And that's what it's all about for me, trying to win your next football match. This game I keep touching on every week. You can quickly turn the other way. We're in a good bit of form. But when that ball starts rolling at three o'clock next Saturday at Barnet, mm -hmm. it's two, two teams, 11 men versus 11 men. And if you're not prepared right and ready to go, you'll come unstuck. You probably know what I'm going to ask next, but uh, the callers just before you on BBC Radio Bristol, BBC Somerset, all asking about one man, really. It, just bring us up to date with the Rory Gaffney situation, if you can. Well, he's struggled, hasn't he? So I'm not interested in the permanent, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. Listen, we'll see what happens. And we're desperate to sign him. Obviously, he's done very well. We want to sign him. But he's not our player. He's Cambridge's player. So talks will go on going. What I will say is Rory's desperate for him to stay. I'm certainly desperate for him to stay. But... As all these things come down, it boils down to, to money and I haven't got any, that's for sure. So, uh, but listen, we'll, we'll see what, we'll see where we go with it. The, the goalposts have moved since last week. Uh, last week, Cambridge were happy for us to take him. I told the player that last week, that it, Cambridge was happy, so the deal was verbally sort of agreed. Now, obviously, the goalposts have moved. They have a right to do that, I suppose. Not really the right way to go about my business myself. The lad's head's a bit fried because obviously I've had a conversation with him seven days ago that you know we'll be delighted and we'll kickstart his career for him gave him the opportunity to do that so we'll we'll see how it goes I'll speak to speak to Sean in, in Cambridge over the weekend and then we'll see if we can we can move it forward early next week is the deal you're talking about a permanent deal or, or an extension of the loan uh, it was permanent it was agreed that we'd, we'd take take him in but uh, like I say that was a week or so ago and the goalposts have moved which they have a right to do because he's a he's Cambridge's player. So, but it's a no-brainer from our side that we want to bring him in. What has he brought to your team since he arrived? Five goals. No, he's, <laughs> he's, he's worked great. He's, he's done really well. He's a level-headed lad. Just goes about his business. Works works very hard for the team. But I've also got also got good strikers on the bench as well. So it's uh, he's certainly not a one-man team, but he's certainly uh, done fantastic since he's since his month when. Not other managers wanted to take a chance on him, and we've uh, we've got him in for a month, and he's he's rewarded us. In the first half today, you had the ball in the net twice, and they were both offside. Well, both given offside. One looked very close, and I saw your annoyance with that. Did, did, have they, has anybody explained to you exactly what it was given for? Yeah, I think they they, they give it for the block on their defender. Rory might have might have blocked it, so uh, blocked him to, to allow the through ball to go through. Sometimes they go for you, sometimes they don't. But uh, for, for me, it was about. Always, we got in going at half time with a clean sheet and just raising the quality and our, and our fitness levels. See, through a lot of games, a testament to the lads and the work they put on the training ground. I think we're a very, very fit team with some pace about it. We're not, I won't say we're the most individual team. We're, that's what we are a team, and that's that's why I stress to all the players we're a squad of players, we're a team of players, we're a group of players, and not ever will I ever let one player get carried away. As an individual, because you don't get success on individuals. Luton have got a such a strong squad of players with good big names, but for whatever reason, they haven't got themselves going this season. I'm sure they'll be disappointed in that. We can talk, we can officially call your team promotion candidates now, can't we, though? That's you getting carried away again, isn't it? Twenty, <laughs> that's twenty, uh, twenty-one games to go, sixty-three points to play for, but we'll just concentrate on the first three.